Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about wild mints inside of Autodesk Inventor. Now, wild mints are pretty crucial, right? Especially if you have a multi component assembly that needs some sort of wilding involved. You can then translate that over to the drawing environment, create your wild annotations, and send that over to your manufacturing plant or outsource that work. Right, so let's go ahead and talk about two specific weld mints in this case. Today we're going to be talking about the fillet weld and the gap weld. First things first, you are going to want to create or convert your assembly to a weld mint. Right, so here it's asking you what kind of weld bead material, uh, what kind of standard are you going to be working with, right, ANSI, ISO. I'm going to be staying with ANSI and then just choose what kind of weld bead material. In this case, I can go ahead and choose steel mild welded. Now, of course, you can always change this later down the line. So don't worry if you don't pick the correct weld bead material. Let's go ahead and click OK. Notice that our ribbon changes and now we have the weld commands associated with this model or assembly. So let's go ahead then and start a weld. We do have a few different options here, right? So like I mentioned, we are gonna be talking about the fillet weld. Now it's asking you for a few selections, right? So the first selection is going to be this face. Second selection, which other face do I wanna to weld to? Right? In this case, it's gonna be the outside of the cylinder. Go ahead and select that. Let's zoom in here a little bit, see what we got going on. So notice that I do get a nice little preview of how far that weld is going to go. Now you also have a couple options, right? Do you want a flat weld, convex, or concave weld type? In this case, I want to change that to concave. Keep that simple. Quarter inch weld. And hit OK. Notice that we do get a nice weld representation added to our assembly. Now, if we look at our design history, we see that we also have the welds separated uh, in its corresponding folder here, right? So if you ever need to go back, maybe change the weld size or change the weld type, you can always go back in here and change that feature. Okay, so now let's go ahead and transition over to our next model. Now, in this case, we have some sort of case and then a tube inside of it now I did constrain it to its correct location so now add a weld connecting these two components now notice that I already am inside the weldman environment uh, in this case if I went to select a fillet weld once again click on this surface and click on this next surface hit OK I would get an error right so it's saying that it can't find the two components um, and they're not intersecting, right? So let's go ahead and cancel that. What I want to use instead is a groove weld, right? So once again, it's asking for a few selections. It's asking for the first face. Let's go ahead and select that first face. Select that second face. Now, what you want to select here in this case is a radial fill, right? Click radial fill and it automatically detects the offset of those two cylindrical surfaces and it creates a weld in between those two components right so once we click OK we see that we get the weld created appropriately alright so that's been how to work with the fillet and the gap weld or the groove weld inside of Autodesk Inventor hope that helped